amazing. Okay, what's up, Paxters? Welcome to Wednesday. Um, just waiting to get started here. There we go. Yeah, so in the office right now, I have a new box. Oh, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> but anyway, I have a nice new box, and uh, inside of it is a Kemet sensor kit. Um, this goes along with the Hackster contest, which is currently running for Make Sense of Our Proximity Sensor. You've seen infrared sensors before, maybe. I've seen a ton of them over my maker career, and uh, you may have developed products with them, but you may not be aware that there's another type of infrared sensor on the market besides your standard issue IR LED or whatever, transmitter and receiver. You might have used these for like line following robots or you know presence detection or whatever. This is a pyroelectric sensor. And what that means is that similarly to how a piezoelectric sensor, like a quartz crystal, will um, produce electricity if it's put under mechanical stress or vice versa, it will vibrate if you put an alternating um, signal through it. Similarly to that, this is a type of sensor made out of ceramic that will detect when uh, there's someone nearby with a human infrared signature. So sorry you can't detect aliens yet, maybe, depending on if they're humanoid. If they're Star Trek aliens, maybe. But um, yeah, we've got a data sheet for this little guy and it looks like this. The cool thing about this is that it can work through materials. So if you make the exterior of your product out of uh, resin or some other material. In this case, they give a couple of different examples, actually. Um, there's through resin versus through, uh, I think, uh, polyethylene. Yeah. So there's examples here using both of those. So it can work through those, which means that you can hide it inside of your product and you don't have to have one of those little domes sticking out or the two little sensors. You can just have it be a part of the surface and completely hidden, which is really nice. Um, so the ceramic will slightly expand or contract, producing an electrical current when you uh, approach it. And the way that this works is explained in one of these blog posts that I'll get to in a second, but first let's get this out of the box and then we can talk about all the other stuff. So here we go. Um, I'm gonna rip this open. It says pull here to open, happy to oblige. Yes, so satisfying. Look at this. Um, we have a packing list. Always a good idea. <laughs> and this says, attention, observe precautions for handling. I wonder what those precautions are. I mean, okay, so, I mean, electrostatic devices. I should be wearing one of those little bracelets attached to my mat or whatever, but I'm not. Uh, you do have to observe some precautions in terms of not leaving this out in, term in uh, sunlight or even bright car headlights. I guess those can get too hot and bright for this sensor, but yeah. So then we have this side up, fragile parts, open carefully. Um, and again, the electrostatic ESD notice. Oh, I'm always terrible at these. Can we just pull it, peel it off? Maybe someone with like better thumbnails than I have would have an easier time with this. There we go. Cool, opens up pretty easily. And da 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 da. Ooh, we have two of them. Do we? Yeah. So here's the sensor. Wow. Now each of these has about, oh, I'm totally blurry. Why are we refocusing? We're not supposed to be refocusing. Let me do this manually. Close enough. All right, so here we are. Yeah, two little sensors and um, gorgeous. These are with no lens. You can get three different types of lenses for these. There's clear, white, and black lenses. They're so small. Like, literally, this is my thumbnail here. You know, it's, it's like that size. You could wear these as fingernails. That'd be kind of cool, actually. Very neat. Um, and then on the back here, they have a little connector that has RX and TX for serial, plus ground and uh, power. 
one other pin that I forget, but we'll get to in a second. So let's go back to the page where we won't have focus issues. <laughs> and yeah, so the challenge is to build something detecting motion. You can do some, uh, any of the common applications like home automation, smart thermostats, robot vacuums, home appliances, etc. Uh, and I'll look at a couple of other potential options for applications as well. Um, you can also just detect infrared rays without using lenses. Cause I, so I kind of wonder if that's what the deal is with the car headlights, because they might produce a lot of infrared depending on the type of lamp. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So it's equipped with an amp circuit and a comparative circuit. It's got digital output. You can read all of these and uh, the dimensions as well. 15 by 15 millimeters by 5.65 high. Um, they really want you to make a connected device with this. So Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. cetera. Uh, you can use at least one proximity center, sensor. Um, power it in any way that you like. Um, you may <laughs> use multiple Kemet components. The nice thing about that, though, is that if you get the lenses, then those count, I think. They are Kemet components. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. You'd have to verify that. Don't take my word for it. But the lenses are Kemet components, so figure it out. Uh, and then you must provide proof of motion being detected with the sensor with a visual or audio cue. And you'll be judged on your layout efficiency as well. So. There's three places. First place gets $5,000 value, $3,000 and an all-inclusive trip to Kemet headquarters in Florida. Uh, second place gets $2,000 and third place gets $1,000. Um, there's four of those winners and no trip to Florida. There's also a grand prize for an Avnet field application engineer. You could win a trip to Japan. And then for runners up, there's 10 runners up who each get a $100 uh, Visa gift card, electronic gift card. At the bottom here, you've got your resources. So I've pulled up some of these. Tomorrow morning, Pacific time, we have a uh, webinar coming up. You can si save your spot now. You'll also be able to check that out. If you miss the sign up date and miss the webinar, you can come back and watch it later on, I believe. On the data sheet, there's all kinds of interesting stuff, but I think that the more, uh, oh yeah, here, here's an important thing. Um, if you use it without the lens, then you get about 120 degree range, uh, like field of view, with a two meter range. And then if you use it with the lens, then you get a five meter range, but only at a 74 degree um, field of view. So, you know, that's, that's up to you how you want to balance that. Uh, in terms of applications, this first blog post has a number of cool suggestions. So they're talking about smart thermostats and uh, Roombas and things. <laughs> also heated mouse pads, you could do that. Water and ice dispensers, a weighing scale that turns on automatically. Um, they discuss how this thing works exactly. Um, how it can work through a material. And then, yeah, exactly, this uh, comparing sort of your former dome structure that would have to poke through your device to this one, which can be completely hidden, or it can totally blend in. If you even still want to put a lens on and have it exposed, uh, you could easily have that blend in as well. <laughs> Extreme excitement. Now, this actually has relevance to my uh, recent life. I was at a conference this past weekend, just three days ago, and I was trying to get back to my hotel room at like 3 a.m. and it was cold and I had a cup of tea with me to like help me on the walk back to the room because uh, I had to go outside and I got there and my car didn't work on the exterior door to the building and I was extremely frustrated because it was already cold and I'd already made this trek and uh, I had to like I put down my tea and I like ran back to the building run 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 I had to wait talk to someone at the front desk get them to get the security person who went to like gave me a ride back out to the building which was nice but then they were like oh the battery died in the card reader so you can't get into your room I have to go around the other way and open it for you and it was so inconvenient and this is exactly the kind of application 
that they're talking about using this for here. Uh, the door has to, the door key sensor has to be working all the time in order to uh, let you into the building, but it's fairly high power. And with a sensor like this, you would be able to have it only turn on when someone is nearby. Of course, you still have to power the sensor itself, but it's pretty low power. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of other uh, suggested applications for different ranges. You've got a projector, like a two meters distance, you've got like a projector, a study robot. I don't even know what a study robot is, but I like the idea. A rice cooker, uh, I would have a kettle just like automatically turn on every time I go in the kitchen because I'm like that. Um, or you could even, you know, program it so that if you go into the kitchen, um, or if I approach the door to my room, for example, uh, at a certain time of the morning, then I could like shuffle off to the bathroom, brush my teeth and stuff, and then by the time I'm done with that, I'd go out to the kitchen and my water would already be boiling, which would be really nice. Um, there's some five meter uh, suggested uses. For example, they mention a business phone in here that you could put a proximity sensor on uh, at a five meter distance, and then you could see if people are coming into the office late at night, like me, <laughs> hanging out and doing suspicious things, I may or may not do suspicious things in the office late at night. I definitely do uh, a certain amount of hacking. And then, you know, su super short distance things like for cooking or, um, you know, turning on your, your fridge uh, or water dispenser or turning on your air cleaner or hand dryer or whatever. Great stuff there. Uh, they also talk about, in this other blog post, you have a uh, more in-depth look at actually how to use it. So they built an example for a conference where they set up this little um, demo uh, poster. And you can see that every time they get close to the poster, the LED will turn on or off. It just toggles based on its most recent setting. And they also have one embedded in resin for some reason. But they give you all the info on what the signal from the sensor looks like. It's not like you don't get a, an actual distance readout. What you get is a binary sort of um, on-off. In fact, uh, the signal looks the same whether you've detected or removed your hand. Uh, so in that case, you know, whenever you come close to the sensor, it's going to do a little double tap of square wave signals. And when you remove yourself from the sensor's field of view, you'll also get that same signal again. But for error correction, they have given you two uh, signals each time so that you can make sure that it's not a false positive also, they show you how to connect this up to the Arduino. You've got your TX and RX pins, you've got voltage in, uh, and then another voltage for the comparator output and uh, grounds. And you actually appear to just be hooking up three of those wires. Then you also have the LED hooked up on the other end. And also they give you the Arduino code for it. So I'm pretty interested to get started with this. I will have to source from some wires. Uh, it looks like it uses a little connector that I might have to solder to. I don't think that I got any wires with the with the kit, but I'm excited to experiment. I'll just like whip out my soldering iron and, and do something fun with it. Yeah, this could actually be a good thing for um, a companion robot. So as long as I stay out of the, ooh, have I frozen? Oh no. Anyway, this could be a good thing for a companion robot, <laughs> like Archimedes. That was a terrible face I made. Um, because I could have it do something every time someone comes in front of the robot, you know, and uh, if it detects a human presence in front of it, I would probably want to do this um, through a material so that they would have to come pretty close. And then uh, Archimedes, for example, would respond to that. Anyway. Go check out the proximity sensor, uh, make sense of our proximity sensor contest. Um, hardware has already been given out, but you have until January 2020, January 26th, in fact, almost February, to submit your project. And so that's plenty of time to get your hands on the sensor. They've already given you all the information that you need in order to get it hooked up to an Arduino and start doing stuff. You could even do some of that fancy TensorFlow machine learning on, for example, the SparkFun Artemis that we've talked about. SparkFun Artemis, yes. Um, this would be a great combination. Um, it has a ton of 
capability in terms of machine learning, and it also has Bluetooth Low Energy, which fulfills as well your requirement to have it be a connected device. So I think this would be an awesome pairing if you happen to have a, an Artemis development board already, or if you don't, you can get it in this tiny little chip form factor, or you can get uh, it embedded in the red board, the nano form factor, or the ATP. I think this would just be a splendid combination and you should totally do it. Now what would I use this for? I would probably put it on, um, maybe on my bike, because it's useful to know when someone is out in front of you, just in case I might not have noticed it. Um, I can be a little bit unobservant sometimes, and hopefully I would see someone. Uh, and I would also be able to detect, you know, people uh, on other bikes in front of me. But uh, just in case, it could be fun to have something turn on. Um, even just a headlight or something, like an extra headlight and flash a bit when there's someone in front of me so they know that I'm coming, you know? Uh, and for that, I would probably put the lens on it and use the 5 meter detecting mode. Then also, you have, I could do some kind of responsive jewelry. It reminds me of this spider dress that Anouk Viprecht created a few years ago. And um, that sort of detects when someone's out in front of you. If they like get too close, then you can... Uh, deploy these spider legs to defend yourself. And that could be a fun, like, wearable deployment for this, or some type of jewelry, you know? So check those out! Um, we'll be back tomorrow with more goodness. In the meantime, yeah. Hack on. <laughs> Look at these little guys, they're so cute. So shiny. Very, very pretty. Okay. Put away your toys, Alex. <laughs> <laughs>